Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I'm going to look at the new African Kingdom's unique Imperial Age building for the Portuguese, which gives them a steady supply of resources without requiring villagers or raw materials on the map. It's a huge building, but costs only 250 wood and gold, takes up 20 population space, and has more HP than a castle. If you can defend it, it has the potential to generate a steady supply of resources forever. Immediately you might think that sounds completely unbalanced. What, Portuguese get infinite resources whereas other civilizations don't? The critical question though is at what rate are they getting those resources compared to the 20 villagers of population space that it's consuming? Is the Feitoria... Feitoria. 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 Balanced? Overpowered? Underpowered? Well, let's check it out. First, we have to know how quickly a Feitoria generates resources, so let's figure that out quickly. It turns out, at the moment anyway, that it's 42 food and wood per minute and 27 gold per minute for 138 total resources per minute. Since we're in the Imperial Age, I'm going to assume that selling 100 food or wood is worth 14 gold at the market, and maybe stone is selling for 100 stone for 90 gold, which is where it's at at the start of the game, and sometimes that goes up and sometimes it goes down. It really depends on how the game goes. If we can agree on all that for the moment, we can convert all that non-gold stuff to gold with our exchange rates, though you may not choose to make that actual exchange in the game at the market. As you'll see, it's a lot easier to convert everything into gold so that we're only talking about one resource rather than four different ones at the same time. Just for interest sake, 250 wood converts to 35 gold, so the building costs the resource equivalent of 285 gold, meaning it takes almost five minutes to pay for itself. If you have guilds and stone is in high demand and selling for 150 gold for 100 stone, that moves it to 3 minutes and 29 seconds. And if all the resources are selling at 14, then it takes just over 6.5. So for most games, our window is probably 4-6 to six minutes to pay back, which isn't bad. They're certainly worth getting from that point of view, but it's only one way to look at them. What about taking up that 20 population space though? Is it producing resources as quickly as 20 villagers and trade carts? Well, let's see how fast Portuguese villagers collect resources in a perfect world. Here they're right beside their respective resources, and those are their gather rates after 4 minutes. That means the Feitoria is working as much as 1.2 lumberjacks, 1.7 farmers, 1.1 gold miners, and 1 stone miner, or a total of about 5 villagers of work yet it's taking up the population space of 20. So that definitely doesn't sound overpowered, even if you're getting slower collection rates than that in a real game. It's just not even close. It's pretty obvious that in a team game you'd be better off getting a few lumberjacks and farmers and then stacking up trade carts with the 20 population space, and it seems like a huge mistake for the Portuguese to do differently. It might cost more to get your trade line up and to create the villagers, but the amount it pays back is in the realm of three to five times the Feitoria income. Even a trade cart on a small map makes 20 gold per minute, and five lumberjacks are bringing up to 170 wood-ish if you're keeping the lumber camps reasonable, and five farmers bring in over 115 food, and once we mix five trade carts in there even on a short route, collectively you're making so much more than the Feitoria and still with five less population. Even if you have to buy some stone from the market, this is just so obviously the better choice. Unless your trade route is impossible to protect, we can pretty definitively say it doesn't make any sense in a team game to go with a Feitoria from an economic point of view. Case closed? Well, not quite yet. There's one last situation to think about. What about in a 1 vs 1, when all the gold on the map has run out and you have no potential trade partners? Can 20 villagers on wood and food bring in enough resources that you can sell them at the market to get as much gold as what we said the Feitoria is worth? How much gold are 10 lumberjacks and 10 farmers generating when you sell it at the market? Well, let's set up a mill with some slightly inefficient farms like what you might have at the end of a game and a wood line and let it run for 10 minutes with no refreshing. While we let it run, we'll have to think about what the cost of all this is. The farms are about half finished at the end, so we'll take off 300 wood for 10 farms being half used. The lumber camps also need to be replenished, so that's another 200 wood. Now I'm not going to include the villager or mill costs since that's just a one-time thing, like building the Feitoria. 
it shouldn't be considered part of the income rate comparison, I think. If we do it this way, we get about 5,000 resources from the 20 villagers, which is right around 500 resources per minute, or about 69.8 gold worth of production per minute using the market rates. Remember way back at the start of the video, the Faderia produces 63.1 gold per minute worth of resources? It looks like in this specific situation where you have no gold left on the map and are relying entirely on selling food and wood at the market, you could make the argument that the Faderia is giving you comparable value but without the hassle of reseeding farms, refreshing camps, and a nice infinite source of stone, all in a building that's more difficult to raid than a villager-based economy. That might all be worth a 10% drop in your income to you, and I think in a 1 vs 1 situation you could definitely be justified in building it, but in a team game you should always prefer trade carts if there's a possible trade route. Remember we're comparing it to villagers here in the worst possible situation, where you're trying to sell everything you're making at the market. So to answer the original question of whether the Faderia is balanced, it looks like, yeah, it's about right. There's a specific situation it could give you an advantage in, and other situations that it's a disadvantage. That seems to me the way that it should be. We could go on and talk about the effect on this of researching guilds and the declining price of stone at the market, or whether the Faderia gives you the resources in the ratio that you'd want, but I think I'm just going to leave it here for now. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.